Good afternoon, warriors. This week, we're learning about understanding text structures and what that means. So let's take the words text structures and divide those up. So what is a text structure? A structure is a building or a framework. So it's just like our school. Our school is a structure. A text structure refers to how a piece of text is built. Builders can use different kinds of structures to build different things. A skyscraper, for example, is a different kind of structure from a house. So we know skyscrapers are very tall. They're called skyscrapers because it looks like they scrape the sky. So if your house looks like a skyscraper, then that's something different. However, most of our houses do not. So we know that the structure of a skyscraper is different than the one in the house or the school or the church that we go to. Writers use different structures to build their ideas. Each text structure communicates ideas in a different way. So they use these things depending on what they're talking about. Our first text structure that we're going to look at is called chronological order. Another way to remember this is sequence. You know, on the clock, it starts at 12 and then it goes 1, 2, 3, and so on. That's going in chronological order. If you look at a calendar, the first day of the month always starts with 1 and then goes on until the end of the month, which is either going to be 28, 30, or 31. That's also chronological order or sequencing. So authors use chronological order to explain how things happen in order. And here's where it says chronological order is also called sequence or time order. So why do you think an author would use chronological order to write about this frog? Think about it. We can talk about chronological order if we're talking about the life cycle of a frog. We would talk about whenever they're an egg, and then a tadpole, and then a polywog, which is in between a tadpole and an adult frog. And then after a polywog, we would talk about the adult frog. So, when it comes to chronological order, I need you to know that you're reading a text in order whenever you see words like first, next, later, then, and finally. These are going to be your key words. If you're reading something and you see where it has this, then you know that that piece of literature or whatever you're reading is in chronological order. Remember, we use chronological order whenever we write summaries as well. So you'll often see chronological order in directions. So for example, it says, have you ever made macaroni and cheese? It's simple. First, first, boil some water and make some macaroni. Then, make your cheese sauce. After the cheese sauce is ready, after, mix it with the macaroni, bake the entire thing in the oven, finally, it's time to eat. So you see here, they use the word first, then, after, and finally. And as you can see here, they're already marked for you. So if you want to go through and highlight that or underline it, I would do that for sure. And these words are called transition words. So they connect one thing to the next. Okay? So we start off with first and then we talk about it and then we say then. So we know that we're going, we're transitioning from first to the next step. And then they use the word after, so then we're going from the second step to the third. 
And then it has finally at the end, so we know that we're at the last step. So we've transitioned from the first thing to the last thing. So which of these paragraphs is in chronological order? Pennsylvania has many historic sites. You can visit Revolutionary War sites like Valley Forge. You can also visit important locations from the Civil War, like Gettysburg. Finally, you can see the site of the first oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Oh, in Titusville. Pennsylvania has many neat places to visit. And then the second paragraph says, Through the ages, Pennsylvania has seen many interesting events. The state was founded in 1681 by William Penn. Later, Pennsylvania was the site of an important Revolutionary War battle. After that, Pennsylvania was home to new factories during the Industrial Revolution. Today, Pennsylvania continues to make history. So what I want you to do is I want you to look through here and find your transition words. They may not be first, then, after, finally, but it may talk about things that happened in order, so even if there's details that you want to mark, you may go ahead and do so. If you picked the second paragraph, you're correct. And your clue words were through the ages, 1681, later, after that, and today. We know that these are the clue words because they transition things. So it starts off with through the ages. So we know that that's talking about a broad amount of time. And then it goes on to say 1681. So whenever it gives you a date like that, you know that it's talking about something chronological. It's talking about sequencing something. And then it, they used later. After that, and then today. So it started with through the ages and ended with today. So we know that we've gone from 1681 when William Penn founded Pennsylvania all the way down to modern day. I want you to think about what is a structure? What does chronological order mean? What are some clue words that show chronological order? You can write these on your PowerPoint handout. Our next text structure is a little bit of a mystery, so I want you to try to figure out what it is first. So the author doesn't want to show something that happened in sequence, and they want to take two things, maybe put them in a Venn diagram, and talk about how they're the same and how they're different. And we call that compare and contrast. So suppose an author wanted to explain how these two birds are similar and different. Chronological order wouldn't work because there's no order of events. The author would need to use compare and contrast. So let's look at it. The cardinal and the goldfinch are two common birds. Both are brightly colored. Both are common at bird feeders. But the birds have some differences. The male cardinal is a bright red while the male goldfinch is yellow. Cardinals like shrubs and trees, while goldfinches prefer open meadows. We also have clue words for compare and contrast. Um, authors use these clue words to show the text structure, so let's look at a paragraph and see if you can find them. So we've already read this paragraph. It says the cardinal and the goldfinch are two common birds. Both are brightly colored. Both are common at bird feeders. But the birds have some differences. The male cardinal is a bright red while the Male goldfinch is yellow. Cardinals like shrubs and trees, while goldfinches prefer open meadows. So if you notice, I emphasized the word both, 
the word but. I'm also going to show you the word while. Both compares the two, but and while can be used to contrast the two. So whenever we compare, we talk about how they're the same. When we contrast something, we talk about how they're different. And as you can see here, here's the words. If you want to go through your PowerPoint handout and underline them, you may. Something else that authors may use, these are text features called graphic organizers. We know that this one's called a Venn diagram. We did these for Matilda. And we started one for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So compare and contrast can be used with the Venn diagram because we talk about how they're different and we talk about how they're the same. We can also use a chart like this to show details. So over here we have the topics such as colors and habitat. And then up here we have goldfinch and cardinal. So goldfinch, we know the color is yellow and they don't live in the same habitat as cardinals. Cardinals are red and they like trees. Graphic organizers are used to organize your information. So what I want you to do out to the side is I want you to explain the difference between chronological order and compare and contrast. You can do this in sentences. You can do this as a list. You can even make a Venn diagram. I also want you to talk about how clue words help you as a reader, especially whenever it comes to text structures. And that's all for today. I'm going to show you how to do the uh, worksheet in the next video.